guys, it's Car Guy 11 Today I have an exciting vehicle behind me, and that's the Toyota GT86 Hakone Special Edition. As you can see, it's in this very cool Hakone green, dark green paint. Uh, unfortunately, the sun's not on it too much right now, but it's a really cool color. And I have the Special Edition key uh, wrapped in this tan leather that comes with this edition pretty cool and I really want to thank Toyota for sending me another press vehicle and thank all of you for watching it and making this possible. So this 2020 edition 86 is basically the swan song of this model as it dates back to 2012 and it hasn't received a lot of updates just some small minor tweaks along the way but the styling is pretty much the same and it still looks good to this day and I love those bronze wheels the spoiler looks cool. It's a metal spoiler, which is really nice. And then, of course, it has a tan interior uh, that matches the key I just showed you. So this is only, of course, on the special edition. And unfortunately, you can't get the TRD package on this edition. But I'm really looking forward to the next generation of 86. So glad to be driving the last version of the present model. And we should be seeing that pretty soon within the next year or so. But I'm actually really excited to compare this car to my Supra. I know the Supra is a lot more money, different price range, but it offers a similar size. Actually, this is a little bit bigger on the interior and it has rear seats. Uh, but yeah, is it worth spending over $20,000 more on the Supra? We're gonna find that out today. Now I have the Supra and 86 Park side by side. The Supra is a little bit larger. It's a tiny bit longer, definitely wider, and a little bit higher. Actually, this the 86 you can see out of much better. The hood is lower, and you have a better view out of the road. Now the view out of the rear, the Supra is better due to the hatch design, which has a larger rear window, and it comes down lower. So today we're just gonna jump right in and do a driving review as this is a sports car. No safety features to test out or anything like that. So let's get to it. Taking the Toyota GT86 on the road, it's a very fun car. It's light and nimble. And actually the ride is very good. I thought it was gonna ride like a brick it actually is pretty compliant and it's actually fairly refined and quiet. I thought, honestly thought it was going to be like a tin can in here and it's not. I'm pleasantly surprised about that. With the weight savings, it's only 2,800 pounds. I really thought you were going to be suffering in the refinement department. You are very low to the ground, lower than in the Supra. It feels planted. It's pretty flat coming around the bend here. You can pretty much go all wild and you're not going to be in fear of losing the rear end. Steering feels great in this car, very direct. No play. And just about the right weight. There's no different settings. The only settings you can do is for the stability control. There's a track setting, but really you're not gonna get into trouble with this car, at least on dry roads. You can easily turn everything off, which I have everything off. rev match. The shifter is super direct. Not vague like in that BMW M2 competition I drove. And it's very light. Not like the C7 Corvette where it's so heavy to get into gears. The clutch pedal is also light. 
it's just a very easy car to drive. And there's something to be said for driving a slow car fast. Bringing just about all the power out of it you can. The engine power is adequate, it is unfortunate, it has that torque dip. Between three and 4,000 RPM, the torque comes down and you feel it. Uh, if they could get rid of that, this would be totally acceptable power plan. Now this is a two liter, naturally aspirated, Boxster engine, go over it cam, 205 horsepower and 156 pound-feet of torque. This is a Subaru designed engine and it's also in the BRZ of course. It does have the cool red aluminum intake now on the latest versions of this engine and, and no engine cover at all. Now the engine noise is not great doesn't have a lot of character. are padded which is very nice even on the passenger side it's like a vinyl material that's padded so honestly they made some nice updates the the armrest here is two-tone as well padded it does slide back and there's a cubby there pretty big cubby with a removable cup holder but the best part the cup holders in the door for your bottle and that's that's nice to have not many sports cars have a bottle holder in the door and the dash itself where it's not covered is has some slight give to it it's rubbery material the seats in the 86 hold you in pretty nice uh, it's all manual, not much adjustments, but I have to say they're bolstered pretty aggressively. Unfortunately, there are no umbar adjustments, which I, I like. 
and um, a lot of sports car seats don't have those. I do prefer an aggressive lumbar. Now the back seats in this car are useless. I don't even know why they put them. I guess you could throw some stuff back there. So a little bit of utility there, but it does have a trunk. It is a small trunk, but it does have a pass-through uh, to the back here. So not bad. And then you also do get a spare tire. I kind of like the two-seat sports cars because it's useless anyway, but I can see a case for just throwing something back there, although it's hard to get anything in and out of it. The gauges are very cool. Actually has a ton of information, including digital speed, gear, which is very rare, the actual gear you're in. It changes only when the clutch is out though, but yeah, it's, it's very cool to see what gear you're in. It has fuel economy, of course, range, and it does have some temps as well, oil, which is nice, coolant, and battery voltage. It also has some performance data, your G-meter, and then it has a power curve, which is kind of funny because it shows the power dip between three and 4,000 RPM. And it also has warnings and um, settings and stuff like that. But one thing that's sorely missed there is no digital tire pressures on here. I don't see any screen for your current tire pressure. I'm sure it has the monitor that it'll probably just light something up on the dash if one's low, but it would really be nice to see those pressures in real time. Now, honestly, the worst part of this car for me is the sound system. I know it can be upgraded, but it's, it's very, very weak. Uh, hard to even listen to actually. It does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is very nice, but even when you're playing sourced music on your iPhone, it still doesn't sound good. And um, that would be something I'd have to upgrade for sure. But at least it does give you the Apple CarPlay for maps and such. Other part definitely looks dated with the climate control and, and for some reason it really doesn't keep up. I have it on 60 degrees and it's barely blowing uh, cold air. So no, it's not too hot today, but for some reason the temperatures don't match up with reality. But it is nice to have. It basically has all of the features I would look for in a car. It has the push button keyless start, keyless entry on the doors. I mean, rear view mirror, dimming rear view mirror, and it actually has the rear view mirror camera in the mirror. Uh, that, of course, is government mandated now, but it's very small, but it does have it. It also surprisingly has LED headlights, tail lights, turn signals, all of that, and they're automatic. Of course, it doesn't have all the latest safety tech, like adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, blind spot, none of that, which is to be expected in a car like this. I tell you what though, I'm looking forward to the next gen of this, this car. I'm sure they're going to update all the electronics, make it more modern here. Uh, there's not a ton wrong with it. Wish they could get this engine to rev cleanly and more linear without that torque dip. I would say keep it. So let's talk about price. So this car is stickered at $30,000 and it's pretty much fully loaded. Like I said, that special edition Iconi trim. You do not have the option of the TRD package, which gives you a little bit upgraded suspension with the Sox dampers, uh, Michelin Pilot 4S tires, and larger Brembo brakes. So uh, I don't think it's actually necessary given the power level here. Although if you do plan on tracking this car, the Brembo brakes would definitely be nice. Now that is over $20,000 cheaper than the Supra. So, 
is the Supra twenty thousand worth twenty thousand dollars more? As far as fun to drive, this is pretty fun, and I would say it's pretty close. But the Supra is gonna kill it as far as power, refinement, uh, more tech, nicer trims. Uh, this also has heated seats, by the way. I didn't say that. Is it worth twenty thousand? I think so, honestly. Not because I own the Supra. For twenty thousand dollars more, I'd like getting that six-cylinder engine, the sound, the power, and everything, the torque. you're going to take a lot of trips and things, of course the Supra is going to be a better uh, long distance cruiser and daily driver. Surprisingly, the Supra gets better fuel economy, but again, I think that's due to gearing. The Supra has an eight-speed auto, which of course uh, gives you more overdrives. But I think this car is great for those looking to get into a cheaper sports car. And when you're in a lower cost sports car, it's just a lot more comfortable when you're hooning it around. Tires are cheaper, brakes are, it's lightweight. Uh, you don't have to worry so much about damage. If you're on the racetrack and something catastrophic happens, replacement cost is cheaper. But overall, this car was a blast and I will definitely be looking at this car in the future. And I would recommend it honestly to everyone without reservation. So guys, tell me what you think of the Toyota 86 in the comments below. Do you think it's worth spending more to get the Supra or is this car good enough? But it is a fun car driven at more reasonable speeds. Now, if you have a lot of buddies that have muscle cars or high horsepower cars, you are going to struggle to keep up in the power department. But anyway guys, thanks for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you haven't. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Stay tuned for hopefully more press cars with the 2021 Supras. We can compare this car to the four-cylinder Supra and then I hope to get the updated six-cylinder 2021 Supra as well so we'll be looking at both of those coming up here in the next few months so all right guys thanks for joining me have a good one